Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So it's been a really interesting 24 hours for me. I've been taking a real deep dive into um, these court documents that are making their headway uh, out into the public with all of the different things that are going on with this case. And there's something really interesting I've come across. It's, it's actually very weird. Uh, there's a lot of coincidences tied into it. We've got a lot of different dates that are tying into this. And it's, it's really interesting. I came across this and I actually rubbed my eyes a few times. I stood back from my screen. I looked again, I rubbed my eyes and that's when the rabbit hole begun. So as you can see from the thumbnail, things have got pretty weird in LUNC. I've been talking a lot um, recently about this lunar influence, these different issues going on, um, the rebranding of specific people, uh, Six Samurai rebranding obviously to Moon Rabbit and all of these different issues with them being funded by a substantial lunar delegate and a substantial lunk delegate which really shows big monies funding them and it's just there's all of these weird coincidences like i said that have been going on a lot of people are sort of like you know he's fudding different stuff like that but coming across something like this uh, it's groundbreaking okay so let me give you an overview of what i'm talking about here a notice of filing of bankruptcy petition and related documents and the agenda for hearing on the first day motion scheduled for January 31st, 2024 at 1 p.m. Before the Honourable Brendan L. Shannon at the United States Bankruptcy Court for the District of Delaware. So like I said, today's an important day, but I've come across something very peculiar inside these documents that I've spent around 24 hours going through these documents on and off they take a lot of time to go through and they bury a lot of stuff inside but this one I thought was quite important just because of the specific fact that this is all now eyes on everything they do is eyes on if they want to pay people they need to file a motion for it they've got to do it all by the book filing things wrong is against the law I think it can lead to like a half a million dollar fine uh, per thing that you've realistically lied about. So it's not going to be good going into this. So like I said, court's a different place, right? This isn't Twitter. Okay, you can't lie. You've got to tell it for how it is and you've got to be honest because it's all coming out in the wash. And it's as simple as that. So like I said, today's an important day. So let's give you an overview of these documents that have been released uh, with the overview of what's realistically going on. So these documents that have been released, the ones that are important to us here are the motion to maintain bank accounts and a motion to pay employee wages. These are really important. There's going to be some important dates during this video. You're going to need to keep those in your head when they pop up. Like I said, this is a very interesting find to say the least. So let's bring you back out of this. <clears throat> what else I want to do is give you an overview of just how much they have on standby, so to speak. So their estimated assets are between 100 million and 500 million dollars. This is substantial and their estimated liabilities are the same. So without further ado, let's get on to what is so weird and what I found in these court documents that you've all come here for. What we got to go over first is this contractor obligation, and this is in the wages motion as filed. So this is them filing for a motion to be able to pay wages and pay different people. So in contractor obligation, in addition to its employees, the debitor and proximity rely significantly on contractors, which include individuals who have expertise related to the debitor and proximity's operations, including research and development, engineering, product design, and software development. Debitor directly engages all but three of the contractors. This is important, okay? The TFL, the debitor, and they directly engage all of them but three contractors whose work hours from the prior month are generally approved by the 25th of the next month, with one exception. The debitor then pays the appropriate amount to DEL by the end of the month. So let me give you a little bit of information on DEL before we go any further. DEL is a payroll and compliance provider based in San Francisco, California. These guys specialize in paying people all over the world. They remove the, the overhead. They do all of the ins and outs. They figure out the tax and they give you what you're supposed to be paid in your country. These people specialize in it. Okay, so let me bring you back to the court document that we've been going through. Bring you back. Okay, everybody 
Still with me? You know who DEL are? So the amount's DEL by the end of the month and DEL pays the contractor by the end of the month. DEL includes such amounts on its invoice to the debitor and the debitor then pays the requisite amount to Moonrabbit. Moonrabbit then remits the amounts to DEL through an over-the-counter exchange, which pays each contractor by the end of the month. Debitor compensates one contractor directly without utilizing DEL making direct payments in digital assets upon receipt of an invoice, usually at the end of the month. Transferred directly from the debitor to the contractor, Proximity currently directly engages three of the contractors, compensating them directly in digital assets. But as of February 1st, 2024, those individuals will become employees, two as Portugal employees and one as an EOR employee. In the aggregate, the debitor remits approximately 92000 per month with respect to the contractor's amounts owed to such contractors, the contractor's obligations. As of the petition date, the debitor does not believe it owes any amount for unpaid prepetition services provided by the contractors. The debitor requests authority to pay this prepetition amount and to continue to retain and pay the contractors in the ordinary course business during this Chapter 11 case. No individual contractor who is contracted and paid directly by the debitor is owed unpaid compensation in the excess of $15,150 cap imposed by Section 507A4 of the Bankruptcy Code. So, okay, there's a weird coincidence here. It's, it's weird. It's a little bit weird. Okay, stick with me. And I'm just asking questions here. Just asking questions. This is now the Treasury Management motion as filed. This is the debtors' disbursements. This is what they need to finalise. Uh, you can Google these terms. This is what they need to finalise. As previously described, the debitor deploys its digital asset through staking and liquidity pools, and this activity staking generates staking rewards, such as transaction fee shares and liquidity provision rewards. Debitor regularly makes disbursements out of existing assets, i.e. its treasury, it holds or controls to support ongoing business operations. The debitor makes a number of disbursements using the treasury management system to cover costs, including paying employees through DEO, okay, who specialize in all this stuff, they pay everybody else through it, reimbursing employees directly for expenses using digital assets, typically USDC, paying third-party vendors for hosting and other support services satisfying corporate overhead expenses and paying rent. For vendors and services provided that accept digital assets for payments, the debitor may transfer digital assets directly from the Bitcoin wallet. For vendors and service providers that do not accept digital assets for payment, the debitor has established a system whereby it transfers the necessary digital assets to pay a specific vendor invoices to a designated third-party service provider, Moon Rabbit Labs Incorporated, abbreviated as Moon Rabbit. Moon Rabbit was the only digital asset service provider that was willing to work with the debitor, debitor being TFL, and could handle the debitor, TFL's volumes. Moon Rabbit processes the digital assets by the way of two over the counter exchanges, the OTCs. The OTCs exchange digital assets into local government issued currency, fiat currency, such as US dollars or Singapore dollars and remits the payment of such amounts to the relevant vendor. The OTCs, in effect, act as a digital asset converter for the debitor exchanging one form of currency for another, fiat. Moonrabbit acts as an intermediary, so an intermediary to, the source, to source the OTCs pursuant to the terms of the service agreement dated November 4th, 2022. Folks, please keep this date in your head. I'm just asking questions here. The service agreement. The OTCs charge a 3% service fee for each transfer and conversion they complete on behalf of the Moon Rabbit, which is in turn passed on to the debitor. Moon Rabbit does not accept any percentage of a service fee. Instead, the debitor pays Moon Rabbit a monthly flat rate for Moon Rabbit to provide accounting services to the debitor, which is TFL. Okay, so instead of these so-called accountants, right, that are handling these three specific people that are being paid of a totally different way to DEL, right? Stay with me here. Just asking questions. Just asking questions. 
Moonrabbit does not accept any percentage of a service fee. As a company, they would accept the service fee, but instead the debitor pays Moonrabbit a monthly flat rate. So they pay him like a fixed flat rate amount. That's just strange, let alone them being called Moonrabbit, right? Weird similarities. And you're probably all sitting there going, oh, you know, it's some company that's probably oh, some weird one in Japan that's all to do with Ken Kempatai and stuff like that. I don't know if you've ever been to Japan, but I've lived out there a little bit. Um, but this is getting weird, right? So like I said, remember the date, November 4th, 2022 is when they went into a service agreement with Moonrabbit. So Moonrabbit also facilitates payment to the debtor's third party payroll provider and employment agency, DEEL Incorporated. You know who DEL are, so I don't need to do this explanation bit. So DEL administers payroll benefits and human resources services for nearly all of the debtor's workforce throughout the world. Okay, all of them apart from three. Debitor transfers digital assets from either the Bitcoin wallet or Ops multi-sig wallets, usually in Bitcoin or USDC to Moonrabbit. Moonrabbit then sends the digital assets to the OTC, which converts the digital assets into fiat currency and transfers it to DEL to pay DEL invoices. DEL then transfers the fiat currency to the debtors' employees and contractors to pay wages and benefits. This is very peculiar, right? And like I said, <clears throat> the date, okay? And everybody's sitting there and you're all going, Jay, come on, tell us, tell us, tell us who is Moon Rabbit Labs? Are they, Moon Rabbit was founded and owned by an officer of a debitor. Debitor is TFL and an officer is someone who works for TFL, right? Right. I'm just asking questions here. So Moon Rabbit was founded. So TFL owned Moon Rabbit. So there was no one willing to facilitate their transfers and they thought the, the best people for it was them. Okay, so we've got all of these weird coincidences that are going, just asking questions. Moon Rabbit was founded and owned by an officer of the debitor. Suddenly we have this Moon Rabbit pop up, this rebrand of Six Samurai, right? Very interesting. Like I said, November 2022. It's a very significant date for the LUNC community. This is because that is when Rabbi first came around and Bilbo. I, I know it's crazy, right? It's coincidence. It's just coincidence. I'm just asking questions here. All right? It's just a coincidence. So November 2022 is when these people came around, right? Oh, we created his account in November 2022. That, that's weird. Oh, another November 2022. Another first post. Bilbo made his literally a day before November hits in 2022. It's a coincidence, right? There's a lot of questions and a lot of unanswered everything, if that makes sense to anybody. Now, like I said, this is all very strange and very weird right? With all of the lunar influence that's going on with the moon rabbit validator, as we've shown in a previous video, is funded by the top Lunk delegate and a top lunar holder. It makes up the majority of their voting power, which they got instantly. Okay. So is this not all more than just a coincidence? I'm just asking questions here. Is this not all more than a coincidence now? And have I not said that everything's going to come out in the wash? What are the chances, right, that this is all not connected? And I, I, I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section, right? I'm going to leave links to all of this. You can go through, you can check it all. This is an official document, okay? It's an official document. I want to make sure everybody can see this just before I end the video. It's an official document that has come from the official website. And anybody can access this. But let me know what you think. Because there's a lot of talk. There's a lot of buzz, right? They're offering all these things. They're saying they're self-funded. And I'm just asking questions here. Just asking questions, right? Is it a coincidence or is it not? Folks, drop a like, drop a comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Other than that, stay safe, stay humble, stay aware. And as always, we'll catch you in the next one. Ciao. Thank you